Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 film Sun. Yes, that is the title. It's not the best title, but that's the title. Uh, this is a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, July 8th. So because it's a newer film and because it's not even on Shudder yet when I'm putting this review up, no spoilers for this one except a very small synopsis. Very, very vague, as you will see, because I don't want to give too much away if you want to watch this film. Now, I'll tell you up front, this is one I'm kind of very much in the middle on. Uh, there are things I did really like about it, things I did really not like about it at the same time. So it really felt like a mixed bag to me. So putting it in the middle. But like I always like to say, you should make sure that you watch it. If you have any interest in this, if you've seen the trailer or you you know hear what I'm talking about or you've seen a synopsis somewhere... Um, and it sounds interesting to you, you should definitely just watch it, give it a shot, and see how you feel about it, because even though I'm here to tell you my opinions on it, uh, you never really know for yourself until you watch it. I know it seems like a pretty, uh, pretty obvious thing to say, but some people just want to take other people's opinions from time to time. Uh, so anyway, Sun, like I said, they could have come up with a much better title for this. I really think they should have. I understand why the title is Sun, but... It's, it's not a good title. So this is written and direct, directed by Ivan Kavanaugh. Uh, he did other films such as Tin Can Man, Our Wonderful Home, The Fading Light, Never Grow Old, and The Canal, which I hadn't heard about any of those except The Canal. I haven't seen any of his other films. Uh, but after seeing this, I'm kind of interested. I kind of want to see The Canal because I think that was actually on my list somewhere to watch anyway because it looked kind of interesting to me. So I'll probably do that one. Uh, this film, the big name in it, is Emile Hirsch. And you may know Emile Hirsch from things such as Into the Wild, Speed Racer, Killer Joe, Savages, Freaks, Never Grow Old, which he worked with Kavanaugh on, and my favorite of his, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which is an amazing film. It's a modern classic, in my opinion. If you haven't seen The Autopsy of Jane Doe, make sure you see it. I actually have a review for it on my channel as well, so you can check that out. And once again, this comes to Shudder on Thursday, July 8th. Uh, so quick synopsis, very quick synopsis. Um, basically, it's about a single mom who has her kid and weird things start occurring with the kid. But there's kind of, the, it's one of these films where it's the question of what is really going on here? Because a bunch of information kind of gets thrown at the audience and it's kind of like, okay, uh, we have this pool of information and it could go this way, it could go this way, it could go this way. Uh, so let's see where it goes in the end. And they do pick a definitive path at the end, which I'm happy about. I do wish there was a little bit more to it, actually in many ways, uh, overall for the film. But I was also speaking about with the ending of the film. But um, they do give you a definitive, they, they choose a path. But it is that kind of film where you're in question for the majority of the film until the very end, and then you find out, ah, okay, this is what was really going on here. Okay, got it. The opening sequence gets right into things and actually has a real good intensity to it. Uh, partially with the way it's shot, it's a little bit frantic. Uh, with the events that are going on, they're pretty intense. And the music is another thing. The music adds a lot to that. So I'll talk about the music in a little bit here. Uh, the audio levels are terrible in this film, just awful and very much inexcusable. I don't know if this just has to do with the version of a, of the screener copy that I got to watch. I hope that's the issue, the, just the reasoning for it and that when it's actually on shutter that the audio is normal. But this is one of those instances where the audio was very low. But it wasn't even consistent. It wasn't consistently low, so you could like, just like jack the hell out of your out of your uh, volume and be fine. It's one of those things where a lot of different things are on different volume levels, and so you'll have like characters talking at one level where it's kind of hard to hear them, but then something loud happens and it blows your eardrums out. That is inexcusable. You should never do that with a film. Now, once again, like I said, this could be a situation where it's just. The version I saw, I don't know. I hope that's the case. But if that is not the case, this should never, never happen. And it's one thing that really bothers me about film. There are literally times in the film where I had a very hard time hearing what was even being said. Because once characters whisper, it's almost impossible to hear what's being said. That's not cool. So big time audio issues with this film. Huge audio issues. Hirsch's character, Paul, is kind of oddly played. 
I think a few of the characters are actually pretty oddly played. I don't know if that was said to be done by the director or if it was a choice by the actors. I don't know. Emil Hirsch in particular, his character is very oddly played. Um, some of the characters I could see maybe why they made that choice, but I still don't like it. I still think it's a poor choice. Um, and his character seems to be shoehorned into the story in a few ways. I mean, how he's a part of the story peripherally makes sense because of his profession but other than that like how deep he gets into the story and where he goes in the story doesn't really make any sense and definitely feels very very forced very unnatural it's just like and we're just gonna jam this character right in here don't pay any attention to this not being very natural weird weird and that's one of my biggest things with this is the characters are not very interesting that's another thing. The main character is probably the most interesting, uh, but I mean, the characters are not interesting. They really aren't. A lot of them are very one-dimensional, and you're just like, okay, that's a person. There's a bit of information that gets presented about 30 minutes in that I assumed was coming. I do feel it was signaled a little bit too hard prior to it being brought up, though. I think they could have, like, backed it off a little bit, but it didn't bother me too much. I was like, okay, that's what it is. We're moving forward. The reactions characters have to things that happen in the film aren't very realistic. The characters feel too subdued. This is what I'm talking about. These characters are weird. Uh, I think the acting overall is good, but I think they were probably given direction to act the way they acted in the film, and I don't understand the choice. I really don't. And there are so many instances where, as an audience member, you're watching and something's going on, and the reaction from a character to what's going on, you're like, this is not matching up here, like, at all. Like, this person is not nearly reacting the way they should be reacting, and it just feels odd. Now, there may be an underlying reason for that, but, and I can guess at what it is, I'm not going to say it because it might spoil some things, but... It still was a bad choice, even if that was the reasoning for it. I still think it was a bad choice. From a visual standpoint, the cinematography and directing is pretty solid. It's not the most amazing, like, inspired cinematography and directing I've ever seen, but it's decent, you know, it gets the job done, it's, it doesn't look bad at any point, so they did the work. It, it, it worked out. The subject matter does get pretty dark and maybe kind of tough for some people to handle, so just know that ahead of time. I was okay with it. It does get kind of dark and disturbing at times for a bunch of reasons. So for some people, it may be too much to handle topic-wise in many ways. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say about that. The music is very over the top and really needed to be pulled back in this film. It is one of those films that I talk about that get me kind of upset where they beat you over the head with the music. Bring it back. Allow the audience some time to sit there take in what's going on without being led by the hand so much because when your music is that over the top and that in the audience's face you are telling them exactly what you want them to be thinking about that scene because the music will dictate what's going on now if you bring it back a bunch it allows the audience to kind of take things in a little bit more feel multi a multitude of ways if they want to or if that just happens to stir those types of emotions when they're watching that scene it's just too much. And, and then you have the added issue of that audio problem where the music is super loud when, when you're listening to the characters talk. It is very, very quiet. So you're blowing people's eardrums out on top of that. So another thing that bothered me. There is some really interesting sound design in this at, at certain times. And if you watch the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. Sounds that don't, they sound pretty unique. And they are very interesting for the film, and I like how they worked with the film. So the sound design, I thought, was pretty solid. There are some scenes that build pretty good tension. Yes, there are a decent number of scenes that actually do a nice job at building tension, and I like that about the film. And the ending is pretty good, like I said, but I really do feel like there just needed to be a little extra added to it to kind of explain more of where the director was trying to leave the story, I guess. I mean, it is very definitive where the story's left, but 
there are some characters involved in the end that you're just like, okay, I understand what you're telling me about this right now, but how did we get here? And how does this make sense really? Because it, it's vague. It's, it's a bit too vague, in my opinion. It really is, and it should have been fleshed out a little bit more, which goes back to one of the big issues with this film. I think the script needed some work. Uh, it's not a bad script. It just needed some extra work. Uh, really good idea, though, I will say. And it kind of takes some um, some some uh, types of, of subgenres of horror that have been used many, many times and kind of throws them together a little bit. So that's fine. Uh, this plays with parenthood and the fears of things going wrong with your child, even if you've done all the reading and prepared as much as you can. This is something that comes up in a lot of horror films that feature children, is the whole, the fear of, you know, keeping your child safe, you know, worrying that you didn't didn't uh, raise them properly and how they'll turn out, or worrying that the world, you know, you can't protect them from the rest of the world. Like, those types of things. Um, yeah. Those are very much at play here. This is something that's been done in film a lot. I think it's an interesting take on that in this. They uh, Kavanaugh definitely did his own angle on it, and I appreciate that. So, And this also speaks to trauma. Another thing that's also covered a lot in horror, especially within the last 10 years or so, um, basically trauma and how it can end up affecting people, changing people, stuff like that. So... There's um, a lot that this film was trying to talk about subtextually, and it does. And so I think it's kind of worth watching, but as you heard, I had a lot of problems with it as well. So I would love to hear other people's opinions on this, because I definitely see this as a film where pe some people are going to love this film. Some people are just going to hate this film. And some people are just going to be like me. I'm very much in the middle. I, I'm not mad that I took my time to watch it, but I would not watch it again either. So I was like, meh. So, out of five stars with half stars of play, I'm sure you can guess, I'm giving it a two and a half star rating. Smack dab in the middle. So, like I said, I would love to hear your opinions on it. Put it in the comments, and we can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. Don't worry, that is not a problem. Go ahead and do that. Also, hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. If you have, you are awesome, and thank you very much. It keeps help. It helps to keep me motivated to do more of these videos, whether it's one of these no-spoiler review videos or a very spoiler-heavy uh, analysis-type video or unboxings, haul videos, opinion pieces, all that, sort of sh all that sort of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. It's been a day. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you very much for taking your time to check this out. Oh, also, if you are going to subscribe, and I think you should, hit the notification bell button as well because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. But like I said, I really appreciate you taking your time to watch this. It really does mean a lot to me. And until next time, keep it brutal.